I'm Alexandra Kreis and you're listening to Outer Travel in a Journey. Welcome to How to Travel in a Journey and to my current guest, Cecilia Müller-Stahl. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome to the show, Cecilia, um, and for making it today on this hot summer day. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're, yeah, you're welcome. For those who are not familiar with Cecilia, she is a manifestation coach and actress currently living in Berlin and works um, with feminine empowerment. She's trying, she calls herself the, I love it, the pleasure priestess uh, on Instagram. And so this also leads us straight into what is your current body of work? Cecilia, how did you stumble across this pleasure priestess <laughs> title? Mm. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. It changed a little bit, but that's very recent that I called it the manifesting queen because that exact that describes a bit, little bit better what i'm doing yeah the pleasure priestess is more i would say where is it coming from inside it's yeah. all based on trusting and following pleasure and expanding pleasure in your body in your life in your awareness so that this leads you to mm manifestations and like your real manifestations the the i would say the soul manifestations those things that are not coming from your ego but where you really touch base with who you are deep down um and yeah pleasure is a bit the energy and the vibration that attracts the components of your manifestation so pleasure priestess feels like this is like the core but yes. the manifesting queen is that is the outcome and this is usually how we work in to make it visible for people what do you get in my work so I decided to choose that yeah because from where we're coming or from where I came from personally I see what you mean when I hear pleasure it's almost like a dirty word isn't it it's my I mean pleasure has uh, so many connotations in the current uh, world and certainly like one of the mantras I grew up with and a lot of other people grew up with was well, like you have to work hard in order to achieve is this where you're going with the uh, uh, what does pleasure mean to you in this connection <laughs> it, is, it is definitely I would say maybe not 100% the opposite of um, hard work because sometimes even hard work can be pleasurable but it says who are you when you drop the thought that you need to work hard mm. and what is your calling then when you trust in that life has your back and that you are supposed to enjoy here yeah um and then maybe this leads you to being fully aligned and working your ass off but with fun and with oh i want this um and not coming from a place of pressure and being in this constant, I have to, I have to, otherwise it doesn't work. It actually include, um, excludes the I have to, I have to attitude because we are talking about vibration. What are you energetically putting out? And when you are in the field of I have to, I have to, then you get exactly this lack yeah, from exactly. the shoulds and the woulds to the I want to. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Now, exactly. Yeah. Now the 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 closest question that comes to mind is like, did you get ever slack for the name? You know, are you getting like uh, <laughs> strange messages from people because you're you're very much uh, visible on Instagram with what you do, you know, in mm -hmm. a way. But I wonder, you know, particular as a woman, you know, when you have that word pleasure, I don't know whether that is 
yeah, I, I feel like there is some... Some uh, sexual connotation. You mean. Yeah, sexual. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I had once a man who sort of confused it and was asking like, <laughs> is this something I can buy here? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and beyond that, I feel I am pretty much explaining what am I doing? And um, I guess this is par like part of it is, yeah, people have to get used to A, sex is not dirty. B, pleasure doesn't have to be about sex. But it's all, yeah, it's delicate. And I know that if I told my mom, you know, my name on Instagram is Pleasure Priestess, she would say, oh, no, I have to protect my daughter. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's something that is a calling. And I guess maybe it is a truth that part of my mission is also I want to empower people to, to trust that their pleasure can go into any direction and that it's not going like dirty and not good where they feel their sexual desires. Yes. It's, or, yeah, or, we have or, to allow we are those yeah. beings. Where it's an exchange. Um, I know this kind of pleasure reminds me of Tantra and I think you're using some of the tantric tools, which is the, the joy of life and the joy of life comes out of like you, the world gives me something or the universe gives me something and I'm taking it as a gift and live through it. While when we talk about the uh, negative parts of how we use pleasure these days, we often end up in this conversation about like, I want this from you because I see that in you. And so, um, right. Um, but a bit like in we abuse I, i'm kind of thinking abuse almost this is why where the dirty thing comes in or it's something that you shouldn't be seen with you know this is something mm -hmm. that is mine this um whole idea of it only belongs to you while in the field of tantra it's like a give a take a and um, something that you give back to the universe while you are receiving it so yeah right yeah and also to really accept we are talking about energy flow. Like this is how our body in its most healthy state flows the energy. It includes our sexuality. And in that case, it doesn't mean now we are already obviously sexual. We are just in flow. That's what Tantra is, like being alive, being energetically in flow. Yeah. Um, so yeah i don't know if that answers what you just said yeah i'm more or less making conversation about the field of tantra and where it's so even like the field of tantra tantra has been so abused or not abused but people think like with the yoga it's just a technique to you know give better pleasure a sexual pleasure to your partner and mm -hmm. certainly it's not where it's coming from and this kind of leads me a little bit um, to ask you or, or show that what you're doing is very much steeped in spirituality and in deep spirituality. So in that connection, would you, can you tell us a little bit more and the listener, how did you stumble across your own connection with the universe? What happened in your life so that you could kind of offer this work? Hmm. So it's a long journey already. Um, I am, I think I felt a connection always since being a little child, but it was not in my mind, not obviously what is actually happening or how I am connected. But, you know, I had a um, teacher in school, a grade, uh, so nine, class nine, mm -hmm. I don't know how you say in English. <laughs> um, and he told me about his uh, journeys into the jungle drinking ayahuasca. Wow. And um, he was talking about meditation. Um, it was the most interesting uh, class for me. It was actually the only um, time when I would want to listen and I, I felt like just deeply touched and felt, okay, an adventure that has to do with me. I will do this for sure. I was 15 back then and it felt like very far, far away. But um, I guess there was always, even in 
um, years of puberty and teenage years where I was, I would say, in a very funny way, deeply confused about um, who I am and disconnected and really just mm. trying to fit in and trying to, you know, get the guy and be accepted and be cool. And all of this, there was always a knowing the pain that I experience. It, I can almost see behind it. This was something that was always there, like this sense of this makes sense in a greater way. Mm. And so then I, I uh, after school, I went to Thailand and went to a meditation monastery and there were like these these beginnings and then it was actually through body work mm. that I was on acting school and really suffered from um, being in a space where it felt very ego driven and I just suffered I just didn't feel I can be I am I'm not really safe I I don't feel that that my being can really show itself exist. Yeah, there was almost like, I feel I am on stage and I am hiding. Mm. I can now beat myself up for why am I hiding? But there was this, this sensation or this knowing, yeah, something is completely missing. We're missing out on something here. And, and then I went to body work, to like basic trainings to feel more through touch and breathing techniques and then i felt like wow i'm coming back i am or not i'm coming back i am more present i i experience pleasure by being alive mm. and um that didn't feel spiritual because it was very much me body not here and but the states i got in were i would say very much me connecting to to the whole and and then i would add you know reading reading books and going more into an obvious spiritual direction and then at some point being in a really horrible relationship and then knowing now it is time for ayahuasca mm. and um and i would say yeah in the in the last year i worked a lot with ayahuasca and with tantra yeah. and and then with quantum healing, but really the ayahuasca was a huge, huge shift and um, a wonderful teaching about knowing that I don't know who I am and that I am way more than I ever knew. Like just this sensation of how powerful we are. For maybe you can uh, or I can quickly explain what ayahuasca is. I meet people who are not familiar with the term. Do you want to explain what ayahuasca is or where it comes from? Yeah, I would be really interested in your definition. Maybe I add something. Uh, it's the herbal the shamanic medicine from the Amazons, which is like a wine leaf or a root of a wine leaf that grows in the Amazon. And the local shamans, they use it as opening tools to open up the consciousness and connect into greater good of ourselves while they usually also do other herbal treatments. But what has remained in today's Western society is the use of ayahuasca, which is um, which, which has same effects as LSD, but in a more wise manner as it's open up, you know, DMT, which opens up the, the brain uh, waves and the connections of the brain, but is, as I said, you know, currently used for many of us as an opening into the gateway of understanding our connection, microcosm, macrocosm, so to speak. Yeah. 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 That's how I would explain it. How would you explain it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, 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 it's, it's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So this is what you've been working with and to help yourself to connect more into, into the pleasure part. I also hear that, that the pleasure and the understanding of the pleasure part is coming from that understanding. I would say that this was already um, something I did a lot of research on through body work and then through giving body work. 
um, mm -hmm. to really know inherently this is where we have to go. This is, and desire is the inspiration. And then ayahuasca opens up this huge, huge field. And then it's, it's the way to embody it and to bring it to earth that is coming through pleasure. What, this is what I experience. Like mm. um, expanding pleasure in the body allows to somehow let all of, uh, all of what we are incarnate into this being. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like, yeah, body and spirit do this together through pleasure. And it's so important to me what you say, because um, I, when I see people doing that kind of body of work without putting in the necessary steps to make it present in their life, often I feel what happens is they disembody this sensation of being in a wider perspective that is not... Um, 3d as such that's not steeped in duality you get a very uh kind of tangible sense of being beyond what mm. we call reality where we have our blinkers on in day-to-day -day life and when people come back they often live still in the in the yearning of going back into that open wide perspective but are often not able to um transmit that into their current life and how to apply that to their life. Have you found methods or is what you're offering a method to make this more tangible, more, you know, concrete as such in giving people steps beyond that opening? Um, or is this what happened to you? I think, I feel it is both ways. Sometimes people work with me and I sort of build an entrance so that at some point they feel like, oh, I want to work with ayahuasca now. I feel I'm really sometimes a bridge. Um, but it's also that I hold this perspective in my presence, this perspective of oneness as, mm. as much as I can or as it is already in my awareness. And I feel people feel it then through me. They, they just, or not through me, but it's somehow, they are reminded then. Hmm. Um, and I guess the body can do the same just by being a body. It's, I mean, ayahuasca helps me and helped me and helps people I see tremendously. So it would be crazy to say, you don't need this, don't do it. I think it's a fast track, but um i feel the body is actually capable to do it on its own by us trusting the body the embodiment being there listening being beyond intellectualizing things mm. just perceiving using the body as a perceiving instrument this is an interesting conversation. Um, I'm also familiar with ayahuasca, obviously, but my perception on it is like, because it's a fast track, it's for some people, it's quite damaging or it leaves them even further more in what already happened. So while I don't want to kind of categorize people too much, but there is obviously people who find it sometimes hard um, to... How integrate it? To, to integrate, integrate it. it yeah and that comes because they don't have any previous ways or they haven't worked with anything previous that gives them a method or um, a connection to their body but they come out of deep fractionate mindsets you know like almost traumatic mindsets and they might not have heard of meditation or yoga or tai chi or whatever you do to uh, empower your own body to live to its fullest and for its drive and so and then they hear about this fast track meth method of ayahuasca and we should not you know and i'm not against it that's not what i'm saying but i i think there has to be also be said a cautionous word about how it has affected people in the wrong way so <laughs> i want to i want to really so Maybe it's the first mistake to say this is a fast track because what I would say is it reminds you like this, 
-hmm. And then the integration work has to be done. So actually it's not a fast track. It's just showing you like, here we go. And then you have to exactly come into this, into this version, into this understanding. And I guess, you know, that it's just about these huge differences in who is guiding the ceremony. Mm. How are people dosed? And are they getting like this, just like work with this? And they have like this huge thing. How much is it in which tradition? What else is um, connected to it? There is, there has to be immense sensitivity around what what is happening and yeah. how how people i don't know ask question afterwards like i the integration part is a, a a very kind of important thing at least in the western world because where it comes from there is already people that have been treated in the amazonas they're already connected with nature they live a much simpler life at least if you know who shamans touched upon and they the shamans understood that the work is so powerful and they brought it forward but in the way it's brought forward is often in if you might want to understand it from a yogic background you know Katabi Joy is, was very much you know he he didn't say much when he taught Ashtanga Yoga it was like one two three you had to know the the version of how you do it then there was a sm slight correction a correction from the teacher and what we found out in in this method of teaching that you have to have a certain frame of mind and you have to have a certain cultural background to accept that kind of teaching and where we are right now you and me in germany in europe where we are people that want to understand and need to understand in order for us to gain from the process and this is all we're talking about to me you know like how do i gain and benefit from such processes ayahuasca or treatments through a yoga teacher is that we we do have to have this field of in yoga they call it satsang or here in ayahuasca they call it now integration where you where you open up to what really happened inside of you at least this is like where what you've kind of referred to that part you know you have to find the right people that speak a little bit your language and where you have a chance to to deepen the understanding of that trip you just made yeah and i guess it's just as simple as um we are all carrying story and trauma and um, ideas about life and the world and how to work with ayahuasca and if someone is guiding the ceremony who carries uh, a lot of shit let's put it this way then the person is a channel not only for the mother meaning the the spirit that comes through then it's like in the frame of this person's craziness and um Mm, yeah, I don't want to judge it, but I guess it's really about trusting your intuition or asking people like, do you have good recommendations? And then feeling, do I want to work in that space? Does it feel good? Do I trust that this person cooks good medicine? Is Yes. You know, yes. Thank you for, for notifying that because I think it falls into the whole thing of the guru, you know, I mean, I feel like we're having a, a parallel conversation. So much comes up when you say that, you know, because the new trade, it, you know, yoga came on the market and TM came on the market, if you want to call it the market or into society and people got more used to it. And with it came the transmission through people that weren't maybe so so clear about themselves and then the whole hashtag me too and the guru kind of came up where we found out that a lot of people who were trying to do good work also their personality kind of came into the whole healing scenario so we can never exclude that somebody is a person as such and that they have their own things to work through but i feel as you said earlier you know it's very hard to um 
it becomes very hard if you don't have that grain of trust into your own intuition and maybe methods to distinct is this mine or is this yours you know and then you can easily fall into that trap that we feel like where there is abuse of power and misogyny or whatever comes along with these healing methods and are a little bit even in tantra you know where kind of like it, it too quickly intersects into something where you feel that you're coming out with an i start to disconnect exactly what you said earlier you know you came to acting and you said i feel i felt so disconnected doing this and it can happen to people going onto a healing path becoming recommendations about you do your yoga you do your tantra you do you know seek out ayahuasca and suddenly they are with people that might not help them uh, where they at because they might be in a very fragile state of um, self-engagement or non-self-engagement mm -hmm. is that yeah is that kind of put together in a way that it reflects back what you were touching upon i would say this is one layer and this is always true like and it really attacks sort of the fact that um people make mistakes and some of them can be really damaging if we talk about the person who goes to the healer or to the setting that should provide healing mm. and expects healing and then gets in this way or that way not what they expect but they get it in a twisted way yeah. i would say yeah you nothing to add here and then there's always this other layer that brings up our empowerment where we have to admit if we want to be empowered something in me brought me there felt mm. the place something in me said yes to this or that why what why was mm. that in me? why is this pattern in me why did i allow this why did i allow that i don't you know, I don't want to take any guilt from anyone who is not um, acting with respect and, and, and yeah. love, but I feel to empower, it's really good to see, okay, everywhere there are teachings, everywhere there's learning, and we have to get our power back by saying, it was me who said yes to this, and who yes. had my, I had my part in this, in this or that way. By, for example, going to a ceremony, feeling mm, and doing it anyway. You have this. I, when I went to my first ceremony, my aunt um, called me and she said, don't go. People are dying there. I read this newspaper article. People are dying. And I was scared, but I went and it's this you have a calling to go yeah. to specific places and there's something to accept about it i feel and i suppose who i want to talk to in this podcast you know are people that are already interested in a spiritual path and or you know or at least hearing that they're interested in something bigger that they can't find in an outer journey only but where we have to kind of look inside and so I would suppose that anybody who is listening and hearing us talking about this is also knowingly taking, starting to take responsibility for their own actions. And that's what you're saying. You know, I heard the, the warning and it might make me a little bit more alert before I go into the ceremony. Is this really sitting with me or is it not sitting with me? Yeah. Yeah. Or even just being there and being in the space and feeling the space really. This is what, what helped me to survive my journey to this ceremony with yeah. the phrases of my aunt in my, on my mind. I said, I will go there and I will allow myself until the very moment before I drink to leave again mm -hmm. and i think this kind of you never owe anyone something in those settings yes. yeah and that is true empowerment and this is 
what you're working with, right? You said initially that you're like doing feminine empowerment. So what does that look like if, you know, because you're obviously, I don't know, I assume you're not offering ayahuasca sessions, but you're, you're recommending it only so you use other tools. What do you use to empower people or to empower somebody? So it is about trusting your desire and allowing to go for it. I started to work with women around topics of jealousy, like under women, and then food issues, body image, struggle, stress, how to transform this into self-love. And it then all came down to, I noticed, yeah, people have desires. And when they come into that state of really trusting that they are capable to manifest what they want, then they are not caught in, I envy you for being this or having that. And I am never going to harm my body or my natural state of being loved and loving myself because this is the vessel how I am getting to what I want. And what I feel is um, it is so easy to say, yeah, going for pleasure going for desires is too greedy. I would say mm. it is the empowerment in my work comes through trust that inner voice and don't judge it. Don't have an idea why this desire is good and that desire is bad. Trust that there's a voice that wants something from you and that it guides you to the next thing. And that it's obviously never about the manifestation, mm. but it's about that which wakes up when you allow to go towards those things that really that you really 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 want and maybe didn't allow yourself for a long from time. a deeper place um you're speaking when you talk about desires it's this connection and yearning of coming from what your soul wants as we say it right 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 it's a difference if it's from here and we have ideas about who we are and who we should be hmm. are coming to that state of truly feeling wow now this is this is me and my wanting is just there it's yeah. not i have a great idea i will th be this and that or i will get this and that it's more this okay there is a degree of reality in my wanting yeah i can't argue with it yeah and if you imagine that women or also men trust that and go for it, this is what sets them free from, mm, I would say, toxic codependency, from toxic self-doubt, low self-worth, because the desire teaches them you have to love yourself in order to get me. That's what desires from the soul really teach. Yeah, it's, um, and we decode or encode ourselves in these identities of like, if I want to be, um, you know, a beautiful woman, if I want to have a relationship, I need to be looking like that. So therefore I can't eat that. I, you know, you have, you, because you mentioned eating disorders or distortions with food, particular in women. And I find that more and more in my conversations on this podcast, that there is a lot of us waking up to wanting to undo these identity shells that are so narrowly spun sometimes and that are coming very much from our mind and from what we see outside and get as messages as success instead of finding that the uniqueness that we present is the success in itself. So, hmm. Right. And at the same time, it is... It can be a trap again to judge that which comes from the outside, which is sort of seducing us. Because there is something very healthy in us. If we look at a beautiful woman, let's say, or a healthy looking woman, and when we feel we want that, mm. it is just this um, story that society gives us that it excludes all the unique forms of healthy and of glowing and of being uniquely you. Yeah. That is like, I would say the poisoning thing. 
Yeah, because what we often perceive as sensitive people is the radiance of somebody and she might come or he might come with a body that we don't feel first attracted to, but we feel attracted to something else. And we can have that as a strange combination of like a classical beauty together with that radiance. I mean, look at you. <laughs> I can't say it any other way, you know. Um, yeah, so you're right you know it's not um we can't be attracted to the outside but we it's more about the connection out and in so we cannot get by without the outer journey and we cannot get by without the inner journey so both is necessary for us to to wake up and empower ourselves to or even i feel like strengthen myself yeah would you say like this is what you're finding in yourself you've been strengthening your yourself through that work and through your own I would, say, I would say i was sort of and this sounds again already like only sexual this is not what i mean i was pleasuring myself i was pulling pleasure into every part of my life and then strength strength came through that or yeah. comes more and more through that. It's like, um, you will not get there through diet or through stop to eat cookies. It's like, where do you need more pleasure? Can you give and us an example? What was one of the pleasurable things you did? And just to have an idea for the listener. Well, um, really interrupting my idea of I have to work hard and saying pleasure becomes a real priority and gets... I have like this hour every day in which I have no idea what I will do and it is supposed to be pleasurable. And then giving this, this myself this question every day or this option, like, what do you need now? And then it takes you to body work or it takes you to a massage or it takes you to dancing or to meeting yeah. more up with friends, with other people and hmm. interrupting the pattern of I have to and yeah. and and very precisely you know like eating with pleasure again dropping the ideas of this is healthy this is okay this is not like really enjoying and fully enjoying i love it i love it i so love it <laughs> i think that was a good fine finishing center sentence that you gave us you know enjoy life learn to enjoy life uh, the right kind of way and if you want to be helped by cecilia to find what's right for you i think that's your work where can we find you how can get people in touch with you cecilia so uh very simple is facebook cecilia Müller stahl and then there is a booking page which is the manifesting queen chat dot you can book dot me and, and we will link this up in the show notes underneath so people don't need to write that down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what there, will they find? Sorry, what will people find when they come to these pages? Yeah, there is. Um, so they can sign up for a free session to that where we really check in if I can help them, if they get what they need with me. And I offer one on one programs which would be working with me for a longer period of time. What I actually don't enjoy so much is like just a single session once in a while because I feel I can get people to a different place if it's this, okay, let's do this now. And um, either this or I have a group, it's a one month uh, manifestation training in which to which I invite also men because it's a lot about balancing masculine and feminine in oneself so that is part of the medicine wonderful yeah well thank you for taking time today to talk to us and my listeners <laughs> it was beautiful to have you and thank you dear listener for tuning in again to my podcast and hope to see you around next time and soon <laughs>